Yo, what is going on guys? Winner Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. Here we are in the fifth and final round of Swiss for the week. I'll be posting the top cut matches, top eight, top four in the finals over the weekend alongside some deck profiles. The One of the last profiles might go up on Monday. Not really sure how I'm going to schedule it yet. But here we have the 60 card Adventurer Prank Kid deck that I believe was on in round two. Uh, versus Phantom Knights uh, that may have also been on in round three, I believe so. Yeah, uh, same Phantom Knight player. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. 100%. Maybe 90%. Either way, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this match, and uh, let's see how this one plays out again. Uh, this was from my locals mega tournament that took place over the weekend this past weekend on Saturday So five rounds of Swiss and then top eight over the weekend So starting with torn scales here discarding cloak pretty solid opening. We're gonna see him dump a copy of wings and Looks like a copy of dark ruler and forbidden droplet in the opening here in game one It's one thing my friend typically likes to do or has been uh, doing with his uh, Phantom Knight deck has been maining both Dark Ruler and a Droplet in the main deck definitely uh, very good board breaking cards to have this format and uh, we're gonna see him go for the Cherubini here after using the wings to bring back the cloak he'll go for the uh, graph effect that will get ashed and Sometimes that's not typically enough, but here it is going to be enough to completely shut the turn down. We'll see him pass, and we'll see our Prank Kid player lead with the Right of Aramisir, chaining Wandering Griffin Rider to that. And he'll get the uh, Faithful Adventure, so... You know, probably uh, the most optimal way to uh, open this engine, I would say, is just having Griffin Rider already paired with Right, so you can get your Omni Negate out onto the board literally as soon as possible and we'll see him actually go ahead and get a little ahead of himself here and grabbing the the draco back but it'll be going for the fateful adventure and then i imagine searching the draco back and then yeah same old song and dance in there like we always see with the adventure engine which honestly in my opinion is becoming like more and more annoying to deal with um it just like makes hand trapping so much more annoying like having ghost ogre is so nice but in some situations like this where like they already have griffin rider in hand it actually just almost doesn't matter um yeah it's like the, the, the prank kid deck in general is just annoying because it's a very like obscure deck to hand trap like you gotta have something like ogre to try to shut down the brave engine um and then things like Bell typically end up being better for the, uh, like you can stop the Enchantress, you could stop the Bowel Bark, which ends up being a really good hit as well. Um, Ash, of course, always being good, but a lot of times it just seems like this is that deck um, that you always need two hand traps for, which is very annoying um, because a lot of times it turns the game into, you know, whether or not can I, can I out the board, right? Um, with my engine to boiling down to like, did I draw enough hand traps? Um, it's just a very, very powerful deck and uh, not too particularly fun to play against, especially if you lose the die roll. It's just basically nothing but an uphill battle from game one. But uh, yeah, we'll see him go for the blue into Meow Mew. He'll gain a thousand, summon out green. We're also going to see the Draco back bounce back one of the sets that was set for. Uh, I imagine protection for Cherubini, so if there was an Ogre or a Gamma, he could at least send the uh, the card instead of having it be destroyed, which is very helpful. Then we'll see him link green and meow for Doodle Doo. Probably going chain link one green, chain link two Doodle. Probably getting access to your Pandemonium here, your your Pranks. Yeah, Ghost Ogre just tends to like overperform in this particular matchup. That's why I'm definitely maining three Ghost Ogre currently uh, in Sword Soul. Not only is it like pretty good against the Sword Soul deck, especially if people aren't playing uh, Heavenly Dragon Circle, which I think is actually a really good card, despite what some people may think about it. I think the card is actually pretty decent. 
Um, yeah, just like free advantage sometimes and just dodging hand traps. And also gives you an out to your own sword soul token where sometimes if you don't have an out to it, you literally just lose because you get linkro sync you get synchro locked. I almost said linkro. You get synchro locked in times where you really can't afford to be synchro locked. It's definitely happened to me a few times. Maybe it's because I'm not that good at the deck. Um, trying definitely to get better. It's definitely uh, not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, you guys will see in the uh, the first episode of One Deck One Month. And uh, we're going to see him link off Yellow and Doodle here for Nightmare Unicorn instead of going for like the classic play here. But obviously we're going into a board, so we're doing things a little bit differently. Unicorn is going to pitch into Biru. Probably trying to force out whatever that back row is. And we know it's probably a droplet, right? Definitely a droplet. Yeah, so he's going to go droplet pitching the gloves. And I imagine that's probably negating uh, the Griffin Rider, I would imagine. Um, but it looks like it's not going to matter here in the slightest. Unless there is an Ibiru. Which there isn't, so we're going to see Prank Kid Adventurer take game one there via OTK, having zero problem going through the board, which is, you know, to be honest, non-existence thanks to Ash. Ash on graph sometimes, like I said, it, it I feel like it is a good thing to hit if they obviously don't start with two guys, because if they start with two guys, they're probably getting graph out of the deck that way, and that gets them a little bit farther ahead by the time they get to Cherubini. But uh, I feel like Ash on Graph in that particular scenario, or even Ogre on Cherubini if they're not trying to play around it, is also really strong. Because that just puts them on having extenders, and if they don't have the extenders, it's just kind of like, you know, a little bit harder for them to, to, to keep playing. But Graph is such a powerful card, and like, especially just getting access to Seer, and Seer surviving Cherubini, which is free Link fighter, Fodder, helps them get access to uh, Rusty easier, you know, etc, etc. So here we're going to see the Torn Scales into the Kagamucha Knight, into the Tracker, and uh, Dumping Cloak, Specking, or uh, Dumping Cloak, Activating Cloak to Search, and then Specking out Torn Scales. Off to a pretty solid start here. And uh, the probably the biggest threat, I would say, at this point is walking into Nibiru. We'll see him activate Torn Scales now, though, discarding Ash. We'll see him dump the gloves. Because Nibiruing the Phantom Knight deck at the right time tends to be really, really potent. Especially if you're denied, like, if they get to Rusty, and then you deny them the Rusty effect by nibbing them, and then their whole field goes with it. Definitely hurts quite a bit. But we will see him go for Levier here, which is pretty standard at this point. And Levier is going to detach the, the Torn Scales, put that back into the grave. And we'll see if this is going to resolve here. He does have a Nibiru of his own in hand, as well as a Silent Boots. Uh, and we're going to see an Effect Veiler on Levier. Very interesting Effect Veiler. Denying him access to recycle some of his resources. And then we're going to see... Torn Scales dumping the wings, and there's going to be the nib there once the Torn Scales get brought back, gets brought back out via the wings. And yeah, there's the Nibiru. Um, only left with a glo or a boots in hand, I believe. Which I don't believe he had the opportunity to spec from hand just yet. Um, which hurts a little bit because he could have gotten a Fog Blade out of that, and unfortunately he's not going to be able to get access to a Fog Blade here because he did not get that boots on field in time for the Nibiru to be dropped. Not even letting him get access to Rusty here. Um, yeah. And then we're going to see our prank kid player lead with Foolish Burial, essentially just another copy of, uh, you know, Enchantress or Wright. Banish Enchantress, activate Wright. Wright, go ahead and get the token and Fateful Adventure. Such an insane card. It just does so much. It's actually unbelievable. We'll see him normal summon the Roxies and link one for you know who. The one and only Meow Mew. And then we'll see him activate Roxy's effect. Gonna go ahead and banish to draw to summon. Which uh, looks to be. Okay, he's activated. Okay. 
I was like, wait, is he not uh, banishing the draw first, but he's getting the search of the Draco back first? And then we're going to see him banish an evenly matched in uh, hand, which is definitely definitely ready to go into a board here. If he didn't already have Nib Valor and, yeah, I mean, Nib Valor is already good enough as is, but uh, add the evenly on top of that, and you're definitely ready to crack some spines and some boards, right? So we're going to see him summon out green, and then link green and meow into Doodle Doo. Chain link one green, chain link one, chain link two doodle. We'll see him go ahead and search here, and then dump a prank and smaller trap. Probably gonna be, yeah, gonna dump the pandemonium and probably search the pranks. And uh, now he's got to worry about playing through Nibiru at this point as well. Yeah, I was gonna say there's the Griffin Rider, and it looks like there will be the Nibiru. And I, I'm just wondering if there was a way he could have gotten to the Griffin Rider sooner. Because if you get to Griffin Rider sooner, I think the game is literally just over on the spot. That Nibiru it not going through. Because um, I still don't fully like understand Fateful Venture. I know, I know there's like the effect to search just the like an equip spell that lists Fateful Venture, and I know there's another effect that lets you grab uh, a card with like an adventurer in its text or something, adventurer token in its text. Um, so I'm curious as to why, like, that wasn't searched out first before Draco back. Somebody could probably explain it for me in the comments. I just, like, literally haven't read Fateful Adventure, like, ever. Um, <laughs> I, I know what, like, the other cards do, and it's basically just Griffin Rider Turbo, but, like, sometimes I'm just like, wait, why don't they have Griffin Rider yet? Probably could uh, read the card. It definitely wouldn't hurt, you know? So we're going to see that Nib Token get linked into Link Spider, as most of these engines are doing, and we're going to see Prank Spec and a Token get linked into Link Karibo. And um, this is going to help him go for the Anaconda, right? Because why not use your opponent's Nibiru token as an extender? That's something I've definitely grown accustomed to start doing now uh, playing Sword Soul. Being able to link that token into... Well, not link it into anything, but uh, being able to use it to, uh, you know, make the Tenyes live, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Because it puts a non-effect monster on your board. Which is actually really helpful sometimes. Like, not even lying. Like, it's very, very helpful. Uh, which is interesting, because, like, a lot of the decks I've played in the past, like, Nib Token can't really do too much with, but, uh, in this case, right, ends up being pretty helpful. I guess Block BA was, like, the last deck where, like, using the Nib Token was, like, kind of an extender, because you just link it off for Saryuja and just keep going. But, uh, yeah, kind of a little cheesy way to get into, uh, the Anaconda is by, you know, having a Link Spider in the extra deck for this specific scenario, and same thing with the, uh, Pranks, having a built-in token generators always kind of busted right so we're gonna see dpe come down it's gonna pop itself or pop anaconda and the nib on the other side and then we're gonna see pranks here activating in the end phase uh so no battle phase here it seems unless uh he tried to enter the battle phase and then he got hit with a Nibiru, but even at that point, like, why not just swing for 25 with the, uh, Enforcer? I think he might have forgotten to, to go battle phase there. I, I don't know, um, the specifics, but it looks like that is going to be it. Our Phantom Knight player not having anything here on the crackback to be able to out the DPE plus the, uh, impending follow-up, so that's gonna do it for the match. Prank Kid's taking it 2-0. I'll see you guys in Top Cut, uh, tomorrow, so yeah, stay tuned for that. If you guys want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members, and they are Tweeter0226, Ponystar, Cadillacs84, and Keith Sidgers. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your extremely kind and generous support of the channel.